Data is one of the hardest things to get hold of when it comes to training a machine learning model, and good quality data at that is even harder. So lots of people that I speak to often reach for one of these public data sets on a place like Kaggle uh, in order to prove out an idea. And, you know, I've got a couple here, a safety helmet detection one and a truck detection data set. And you might find this data set and think, oh, wow, okay, there's 5,000 images and it's sort of roughly the bounding boxes that I'm looking for. Um, but then when you actually go and inspect the data set, it's not of the highest quality. So if we look at this one in particular, you know, we have uh, some images which are screenshots from, uh, I don't know, a, a, a video or ones which are stock photos with a bunch of overlay um, which might not be appropriate, you know, and this isn't really a real world image. And then there are some instances where there might not be the correct labels on uh, one of these images. So you might struggle to uh, actually correctly uh, identify the right bounding boxes, or maybe there's this sort of image where it's actually three images all in one. Um, and then with something like this truck detection data set, the data looks pretty good, but it's been pre-processed and I don't really want that in, in my data set. You know, this image has been rotated and there's been Gaussian noise and despeckling applied to it. So these are scenarios that come up an awful lot. And up till now, you would have to go through all of your data set and manually disable images or delete images that are, are going to cause you a problem in your data pipeline to get a really clean data set. That's really time consuming especially when you have hundreds or thousands of, of images. So what I've done is I've built on some of the work that our CTO Jan did a couple of months ago now, uh, looking at using GPT-4.0 to uh, label large-scale image data sets. I've built a new transformation block, which can help you validate and clean your data set, specifically for object detection at the moment, but it could be expanded to be for uh, other types of data as well. So that's what I'm going to show you today. We're going to start off by looking at this truck detection data set from scratch, and then I'll show you how it's worked on a larger data set as well. So this truck detection data set has some augmentation applied that I don't really want. So some random Gaussian blur and salt and pepper noise was applied to create three versions of each source image. I really just want the original source image, so I'm going to try and remove these things. And I also I'm concerned that all of lots of these truck images are incorrectly oriented. So I want to find those images. And the way that my transformation block works, which uh, is now published on GitHub and shortly will be available within the platform, is that you can pass in an open API, key, open AI API key, which is uh, uh, for ChatGPT 4.0, and it uses the API to call that with a prompt and with one of the images. Uh, asks for up to three validation prompts. So in this case, you might ask it to check that the bounding boxes and labels, uh, if they don't correspond to the actual image, then you could disable that image. Uh, if the image is not clear enough to determine the objects in the image, then you might want to disable that. Or if there's a text overlay, those are just some example prompts, which are pretty universal, but we can go in and change those around. And the nice thing about this block is it can label uh, or it can uh, validate a really large selection of data very quickly because we, we have concurrency enabled. And uh, the prompt that's built out of this little UI also passes the bounding box information of each image into that prompt. So uh, GPT-40, each time it performs one of these validation tasks, knows what it should be in the image based on the labels that are provided, and then can look itself and validate that for you. Uh, so we're going to try this out on this truck detection data set. And the way to do that is to head over to data sources, click add new data source. This is only available for enterprise users at the moment. Transformation block and then validate object detection data sets using GPT-40. So the open, API, open AI API key is uh, already applied to this whole organization. Uh, so you would need to go in and add that secret yourself into uh, your secrets area on the organization. You can click Manage Secrets there to find out where that is. So the next thing to do is to build our prompts. I'm going to leave this first prompt to check that the bounding boxes actually do correspond to the image 
uh, that, that's provided. That can be useful for just finding if someone's accidentally mislabeled an image. But then in this prompt, I'm going to ask, just refer back. So I want to get rid of images with Gaussian blur and salt and pepper noise. Uh, so the image has Gaussian blur or salt and pepper noise applied. And then the final thing is that the image is incorrectly oriented or rotated. So those are the three validation prompts that I'm going to try. And then it's really very simple if you want to label all of your or uh, validate all of your images, and you can just leave that as is, or you can validate a small number of them. And we'll do uh, 10 concurrent uh, processes so that we speed this up. So then all we need to do is create the pipeline. And this will then run on all of our data, hopefully. So we can just see the uh, job loading there. I'm going to pause now and come back once that's complete. So we've finished validating. And after that, out of 628 samples, only 61 were found as valid. 563 were found as invalid. So this shows a little bit of how kind of useful and powerful this can be. This might seem like a, a bad result, but actually this is good because it means that we've narrowed down our data set to be really high quality. So in Edge Impulse, you can just uh, click on over and uh, have a look at the enabled samples to see which ones were seen as valid. And you can see here, you know, uh, each of the uh, validation steps has been given reasoning. So you can see here, the reasoning is that the image shows trucks that correspond to the bounding box labels provided in terms of location and size. The image seems clear, does not have Gaussian blur or salt and pepper noise applied, and the image is correctly oriented. And that's the case here. Uh, and you can even see uh, the, what was passed in. That's really interesting. We've got some uh, well-labeled samples here. A couple of them have slipped through. This perhaps looks like one of those error samples because none of the metadata was applied. Um, but then if we go to disabled samples, you'll see where this really comes into its own. So here we go. This this one's been disabled, so it won't be used in training. And it's been disabled because, just hover over this. It's, uh, has salt and pepper noise applied and it's incorrectly rotated. Um, and you can see this one has salt and pepper noise applied as well. So. Uh, it's been disabled. This one has salt and pepper noise, Gaussian blood applied as well. Uh, so this is the sort of thing that you can do with this kind of block. Uh, very quickly scan through a really large set of images and remove ones that uh, are not appropriate for training with based on the criteria that you set. Um, so we've ended up there with a smaller number of, of samples than perhaps we started with, but they're all of really high quality. And you can tweak those uh, different validation prompts as you see fit. I want to show you another one that I, I tried a little while earlier. Now, this is a data set that I used uh, the default. So if I show you the, the prompts that I used on it. Uh, so, so I use these three prompts to validate the entire data set. So looked for whether or not the bounding boxes corresponded whether or not the image was clear enough to determine the objects or whether there was a text overlay on the image. And from this particular run, we ended up with, uh, this is a larger data set, 5,000. You can see some of these were disabled because there's a text overlay. If we scan through and filter by disabled samples. Um, So if we look through these, you should see a couple of reasons why these were disabled. There's a couple of interesting data points in this data set that I wanted to highlight. Um, let me... So this particular sample you can see there's text overlay. This one, there's text overlay. There's text overlay, overlay in lots of these. But then sometimes uh, there are samples which are completely incorrectly uh, labeled. And, and let me try, try and find one. Uh, and that will tell you uh, a good reason for why uh, this sample might be um, 
disabled. So this is the sample I wanted to show. So this is a classic example of uh, why some of these large data sets are really important to validate because uh, there are 5,000 images here. And this particular one, <clears throat> you can see very clearly, all of these heads have been labeled as helmets when they should be labeled as heads. And by using this uh, uh, new tool, you can see that we've got a, a reasoning that this was disabled because the bounding box and labels do not correspond to the objects in the image which is um, really valuable. And that that would have really thrown off some of the training exercise, especially if there are a number of samples that were mislabeled. So this can be a really powerful way of en masse creating a high quality data set. You can see uh, for this particular data set, if we look at the enabled samples only, we have, um, let me just select all. Excuse me. So we have a thousand samples that are valid out of uh, over five thousand uh, to start with. So, so we've really pared down that data set. But a thousand really high quality samples are much better than a bunch that are uh, not properly validated. Anyway, this will soon be available to you under the data sources if you are a an enterprise user uh, under this validate object detection data sets using GPT four O. You will need an OpenAI API key to uh, run this, but it's another useful tool in the belt of LLM-based tools for training Edge AI, and hopefully uh, you find some use in it, particularly for validating your data sets. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Jim Bruges. Uh, I'm staff solutions engineer at Edge Impulse. Please do reach out if you have any questions about uh, this or anything else to do with the platform. And if you have a particular use case you want to discuss with our sales team, we'd be happy to talk to you. Anyway, thank you very much. Goodbye.